Um, this is a big launch for me. I'm really excited about it, but let's get some business done. I can already see people are on the website. They're already saying hello. So hello, lots and lots and lots of people. I will jump back to that as we go along. I'm very excited to show you everything I've got today. So before we start the ball rolling, before we do anything else, Katie Sue Designs has actually done a giveaway of two sets of this. And I wanted to make sure you knew straight away who the winners were because I didn't want you hanging around to buy it thinking, oh, I might have won it. Let's get it out of the way. Let's make sure it's shown that you've won it. So I have two names in front of me. These were completely chosen at random. One was off the new signups and one was off the existing signups to the Katie Sue Designs Cake Decorating newsletter. So good job on that. So the winners are, drum roll please, uh, Lisa Murphy and Debbie Reeves or Reese. R-E-E-V-E-S. So those names again, Lisa Murphy and Debbie Reeves or Reeves. Um, you're going to get an email from us asking for your contact details. Congratulations. You've just won a free continuous quilting mold and a free mini quilting mold. So those are on the way to you. And I have another very important announcement to make too. We are launching these today in the UK. So if you order them today, sorry, when you order them today, they will get shipped out to you. Um, you can, if you're in the USA, you can pre-order them and they will then get sent to you, delivery expected the 13th of July. Because obviously we need to ship them to America first. So but there you go. And another exciting thing, for anyone who's an ISIS, International Cake Exploration Society member, Nicholas Lodge's stand in Cincinnati at the convention, he will have them. And I will be there. So come and ask me questions. Come and take a look. Come and see how what they're doing and how we do it. So let's have a look at these things, right? Um, continuous quilting mold and a mini continuous quilting mold. Now, what I wanted to do here is, as a commercial cake decorator, I do know quilting is very, very popular. However, it's very time consuming. You're there, you do all the marks on your cake, and if it goes wrong, you've ruined a cake. Now you've got a mold. If it goes wrong in a mold, you roll it into a ball and you start again. So let's, let's show you those in a minute. So I have a whole list of things I have to tell you about these molds. Firstly, what will they cover? They will cover any size cake or cake drum. Because they're continuous, I can add panels wherever, and I will show you how to do that. But that's the unique selling point of this. If I've got a multi-shaped board, I could add panels and panels and panels until I've cut the whole thing beautifully. Same with the mini as well. So very good set to have, very useful. Um, now, I've designed them such that I've got a bit of a diagram here. If I've got a four inch high cake, then of course it'll fit a four inch high cake. If I've got a three inch high cake, a three inch high cake will fit. If I turn it lengthways, I can immediately get a five inch cake and a six inch cake. So those are just the heights you can just just pop them straight out and stick them straight on. And we're going to be working on a four inch cake today. But as you can see, immediately I can just pop them out of the mold and they're ready to go. Um, we have built into this, if I can go to the overhead shot for this one, I wanted to explain the mold just slightly. Let's bring it down, there you go. Now, if you look at the mold, there isn't a straight edge on any of this, and that's one of the reasons, because it means I can add pieces up. However, because I know we have to cut them, all of the quilted marks within it all line up perfectly. So if I do want to cut this into a square, I just follow the grooves and I can cut it to shape. Okay, so something to look out for, and as I said, we're using that more as we go along. Now, within this, um, I purposely didn't put a bead into the recess. What I want to do is I wanted you to be creative. So once this is on a cake, you can actually go in and you can put a drage, you could put a sugar pearl, you could pipe a little dot of raw icing, you could actually put an edible diamond if you wanted. So let's have a look at a piece that is already out of the mold, just as an example for that. So as you can see, so this is as it comes out of the mold, and I will be doing one for you in a moment. So you have a recess here, which will sit anything from a four millimeter drage downwards or four millimeter sugar pill. You could do a little plunger blossom into there. You could do an edible diamond. You could actually pipe a little bit of raw icing. I haven't tried it yet, but because of the thickness of this, I am absolutely certain I could pour ice malt into this. And if I poured ice malt into it, I could then do a shaped piece from it. When we look at the smaller version, which is the mini, 
The Mini has exactly the same features, although on here you would need a 1 or a 2 millimeter um, Draget for it or Sugar Pearl. I would recommend looking at Sprinkles. Sprinkles is probably the best option for that. So let's get on and show you how this all works. Now, we have our mold. Now, what am I going to put in the mold? I'm going to put sugar paste or fondant. Now, if you use just regular sugar paste or fondant, you're going to find it's a bit too sticky. So I will put a bit of Tylo into it or Tylos powder, CMC powder. Now, I'm not adding a huge amount. As I've tested it, I found if I add about one gram of Tylos powder or CMC powder to approximately 250 grams of paste, that means if I've got a kilo of paste, I'm adding four grams of Tylo powder or CMC to that. What that will do, just toughen it up a bit and stop it being sticky, but it won't affect the taste of it on the cake. So that's what I'm going to be using today. So first thing I need to do is I need to prepare my mold. I'm going to take a little bit of white vegetable fat. Now, white vegetable fat for me in this country is Trex. In your country, it may be Crisco or another brand. As we are using a food item on our mold, and I'm only using a little bit of it on the mold, I would recommend that when you've actually finished with your mold for the day, just give them a bit of a soapy wash. Yes, you can put them in the dishwasher. They are food safe, they are flexible, they are heat heat resistant as well, so I could put this in the oven with ice molten if I wanted to. There's lots of things I can do with this. Just know, give it a good wash because you'll find with some vegetable um, shortenings, you will find that there's a little bit of a residue. You don't want that sinking into your mold. You don't want it discoloring your mold. So I've done that. I'm not using cornstarch at this point. So let's put my prepared mold to one side. Now, I have found through extensive testing that if I take 170 grams of the paste, which I'm just kneading back into life here. Um, I shall let you know it's a heat wave here in South Shields, so everything is incredibly sticky. I'm going to roll this into a log. Now my log needs to be approximately the length of my mold. Okay, there you go about the length of my mold. And then what I'm going to do is, there's going to be a seam on here where I've rolled it all together. I'm going to roll this out to be in a rectangle shape. Now I've said 170 grams of paste. Now 170 grams of paste is what I would recommend for use with this mold. But the molded piece when it comes out will not be 170 grams. It's more likely to be 110 grams. So if you're calculating how much paste you need, that's, that's the reason why you always need a little bit extra and you will actually be taking it off afterwards. So there's no problem in using a little bit of cornstarch to roll out with if that's what you're used to rolling with or you can roll with ice and sugar if you wish. Now my aim is to take my mould and to have this approximately the same size. Now areas to look out for, make sure the paste is pulled out at the corners so you will actually fill in the corners. Okay, a little bit more there. Now, as soon as I've got that in there, the next thing I do, just because of sticky fingers, I dab a bit of cornstarch, rice and sugar on the back, and now I'm gonna press down and anchor the paste into the quilting mold. All the way along, just pushing it down. Then work your way around the edges and actually press it into all of those little pointed corners just to make sure we've got nice clean depth of paste there all the way around the next thing i do is take the pad of my thumb i put a bit of cornstarch on there just to actually stop myself sticking to it and i'm going to swipe away the edges of the paste I mean, there are certainly different methods you may wish to use, but this is the one I find works best for me. And I do the same method with the mini as well, which I'll be showing you a little later on. So swipe that away. All the way around. Now, as you can see, we started with 170 grams, but I've definitely got excess which is just goes back into the bag for later. Now, obviously we can't have raggedy edges, so I just work my way around. I'm sort of supporting the paste with one finger while I push the paste in with my other finger, just so that it doesn't move around. I don't want any double impressions on my molded piece. So, here we go. 
Now, I know people out there are messaging and liking. Thank you very much. I will get to you in a moment. I want to say hello to everybody that I can. But I know everyone wants to see how this really works. And I'm really excited to share it with you guys. It's, it's been a long time in the planning, this. Me and my drawing set have been out for a while trying to make this work and find the perfect size for you. And you may have noticed that we've actually earned quite a big mold for a Katie Sue Designs mold. And that was because we're aiming at cake decorators. Cake decorators need equipment that's size effective to their cakes. So there you go, it's all pushing. Now your temptation will be to give this a good roll. If you press it too hard, you're gonna get a double impression. But if you just gently roll the rolling pin across the back, it'll even out any lumps and bumps. It doesn't matter about the texture on the back, it's never gonna be seen. Now, flex it just to make sure the edges are loose, flip it over, and then just peel it back, voila. How easy was that? Now, what, what I wanted to show you was, let's move this just to one side slightly. So let's take a piece out that I did earlier. Now, where are we? There you go. How's that for a seamless join, guys? That's what this is all about, and you can do that on your cake. And we're going to do that on a cake in a second or two. So just let's sit that there, let that soak in. There's a few things I do want to tell you about purchasing these molds, and this works perfectly the same for the mini and the continuous quilting mold. Now, question is going to be, how much is the continuous quilting mold? It's 19.99, guys. That's a good deal for food safe heat resistant silicone that you can put in the washer and it's virtually indestructible. Once you've got this it will speed up your workload incredibly when you're doing quilting cakes and we're going to be looking at cookies and cupcakes. We're looking at molded pieces as well. There's a lot can be done with this one. The mini one is actually in at $12.99. I would say if you're going to buy one buy two because if you're going to buy the big one just say you do a quilted wedding cake the little one you've got those wedding favor cookies to do you've got those wedding favor cupcakes to do why not get the two at the same time where do you want to buy them from okay if you go to www.katiesuedesigns.com go to the website you'll be able to purchase there there will be a british and an american option as soon as you land on the website choose which country you're in or which option you want go to the cake decorating and they will there as i said if you're ordering from america these are on pre-order you can purchase them they will get to you approximately the 13th of july no promises we don't know how shipping and air flight and everything is going to work but that's our target date to get them to you in the states also don't forget if you're at the isis convention that's the international cake exploration society in cincinnati convention i believe that's at the end of july I'm there, I should know where it is, but my brain is just shut down on me. Um, I'm going to be there demonstrating this on the Nicholas Lodge stand. Nicholas Lodge will have both of them with him. So make sure you come by and see me. Have a play, have a feel, see how they go. So what else do you need to know? Now, let's go back to the overhead shot again. So let's move that out. Now, I wanted the thickness of this paste, once it comes out the mould, to be the thickness of the paste that I put on the cake. So I could have covered my cake in buttercream, put a disc of paste on the top, and then attached it straight to the side as the covering of sugar paste. Or I could have done a coating of ganache, and this goes on the top. Now, I liked it because with the tilo I can handle it. Also, when it comes to marrying two pieces up at the end of the end of the cake the back of the cake if you've got a slight gap there is a little bit of stretch in this design so you could stretch it out and it'll go together or as you can see by the whole thing i can squish it together a little as well so you would measure the gap that's left and go how much of a gap that is measure these and then you know exactly how much space you're going to need to do now i want to say from point to point on here is one inch which means that these are half inch increments, these little marks. So you're never going to be more than half an inch away from what you want to set it up with. So let's put those two together because I want to show you what it looks like on a cake. So coming in with the cake, we're going to have to go to the front shot here for this. So what I'll do is I've already got one panel on here. I just want to show you quickly the technique for placing them on the cake and then I'll tip the cake up so you can actually see it in the overhead. So I know this is a four inch cake. I know that because with my trusty little guide, and it's just a piece of card guys, just so I know that it matches high to my cake, I can come in then, where am I up to? Come in here and I can actually take my 
guide and just pop to the overhead again I can see this is almost at the maximum for this cake so I tend to use pizza wheel anyone who knows me knows I love my pizza wheel so I follow the guide along the bottom try to keep it as straight as possible because this will be sitting directly on the board obviously all of those bits come off and they go in the trash then I look at the top and I go to the nearest one so for me that's probably just a couple of millimeters short but I can always stretch the paste when it goes onto my cake or alternatively I could have cut the line above and squished it down a bit so again that goes out so I have my stripper paste now don't be tempted to glue this it's easier to glue the cake so I'm just using for this because I've already got a cake that's covered in sugar paste or fondant I've got a little bit of edible glue I'm just going to come in and I'm going to brush this onto my cake so if this was ganache I'd just be using a little bit of water with it if this was buttercream I'd probably just use a bit of a spritz spray just to get my buttercream a little damp so that's, there you go. Now you don't want too much on, but you do want enough that it'll actually slide a little bit. Give it a few seconds. You want a few seconds just to make it stick enough for this to attach itself. And then, right, I'm doing this backwards and upside down, guys, so forgive me if I'm not perfect. But if I slide the pieces together, make sure the bottom is tucked in and it's in place. Just need a little more glue down the back end of this. There you go, and just stretch that up. So as you can see, it's now covered that. Now I'm going to add another piece just to repeat that so you can see how easy that was. Now, next question I'm going to get for you is, can I prepare ahead of time? Yes, you could. I prepared these pieces which I've had wrapped in plastic. And all I've done is I've got plastic wrap and I've just folded it so the air is not getting to it. And I've had these prepared for easily an hour. So while my cake is chilling in the fridge, I've got the buttercream chilling down, the ganache chilling down. I can be making my panels because they don't have to be stuck on immediately. So let's do this one more time. Right, I don't need my guide this time because I happen to know it's the top, uh, the bottom line and one section down from the top. So, see, so you've got me doubting myself now. So, in we come, it's this line here. All the way across, take that off. Now, if you're doing a cake, you might want to save these pieces because when you get to the back of the cake or there's another place on the cake, you might actually want to just use those little squares or diamonds to join them up. So, coming in again, a little bit of edible glue on here. I tend to put a bit of glue on the top edge because I want to make sure that it's going to stick to the top edge because that's the main support. Also, I do a little bit where the joins are because I want to make sure that's fully attached as well. So a bit of a quick job there. I'm going to pick up my piece of paste, slip it in, attach it, Press it gently against my cake. Have a look at your cake. Make sure that if you need to stretch it upward slightly, then do so. There you go. Right. If I can go to the overhead now. So as you can see, oh, there's one I haven't pushed through. It's quite easy just to push them back together again. But as you can see, how quick is that? Now, you could do this with modeling chocolate as well, guys. Don't forget, modeling chocolate goes in and out of molds. As I did say, you could do it with isomalt, and if you do it with isomalt, you could let the isomalt set in a standing up position, so you could do pieces for the side of the cake. Now you can see here, I'm working my way around the top. Because I'm now at eye level, I can actually just work the paste back up. So as you can see, perfect. That's a real humdinger of a finish. The top edge, you would always have a top edge if you're putting quilting sides on anyway. I would say, yes, you could try and blend the edges in, but you're going to put something on there. If you're going to make it a nice clean finish, then so be it. That's the right way to do it. Now, again, where do I get these from? Make sure you pop to the k2designs.com website and you will find them there. And as I said, don't forget, the shipping on them 
is to America. You won't get them till the 13th of July, approximately, but you can pre-order them. And don't forget, in Britain, they'll go out as soon as you order them in, so they should be with you in the next couple of days. So, where are we up to on my list of things I must do with you? Da, 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 da. Right. Okay, now... Um, when we actually looked at the beginning, there were cakes on there that you saw as you looked through. There was a cake I did that has been shared quite a lot on the internet. It was a lime green cake with a purple insert. Now, people didn't know at the time I was actually practicing with my own mold. So what I want to do is I want to show you how I would create a panel out of a piece of paste just because if it's not the right size or shape, I want to show you how you would work about doing that. So I'm going to take two pre-made pieces. It's just a bit of cornstarch on my work surface. I don't want things sticking. Now, as I said, these are the pieces I did a little while ago. And I've just wrapped them in plastic wrap just for ease of handling for me. Let's get rid of that. Now, you do have options here. I would say if you're going to be... Let's turn that around because I've stuck my finger in it. There you go. If you are going to be doing a shape on this. The shape I'm going to do today is actually an oval. Now, as you can see, I could just about get an oval out of one square. But you know what? I wanted to show you how to do it if you couldn't get an oval out of one square. So what I would say is you have options. First of all, if I turn this around, I've now got a complete oval. But what if I didn't want diamonds? What if I wanted to do something that was a more of a checkerboard effect? See what I mean? So we're going to do the diamond one. But let me take this up. Now, wherever the join is, I would say make a decision where on your cutout it's going to be. I tend to like put, oh, it looks a bit like an Easter egg, doesn't it? Um, I like to put this cutout piece a bit further up. So I'm going to move this down so you can see. I piece them together here. Now I'm going to use a cutter just to push down into my paste. So I've got it. You could have actually cut a paper template out and actually cut around this with a craft knife. So let's just pull away my excess, put that to one side because I might want to use that for something later. So lift that back off. Now, I wouldn't want to pick that up and add it to my cake in one piece. So I'm going to take away, it does look like an Easter egg, doesn't it? Ha ha. So, all right, so if this was the side of my cake, I'd obviously be sticking on the side of my cake. I would stick the side of the base one on first, but we're going to stick this on the top of my cake here. So let's bring my cake back into being. That's how it's central, so you can see it. So this time, I'm going to take my edible glue, just put a bit on the back of here. Now, gravity is going to hold this piece in, paste, in place, so I don't actually need to worry about going to all of the edges. So there you go, a little bit of cornstarch on my fingers because I've obviously just touched everything. A little bit of extra glue on the top half. Then I'm going to come in, slide that in. Perfect. Perfect, flawless topper for a cake. Now, on top of that cake, what could I do with it? I could put a flower, I could put a rose, I could do anything on top of there. I could actually bring the detail out further with a bit of luster dust. So let's look at some luster dust. Let's see whether I've got a pink one. I do have a pink one. Now, if I was dusting this in, in on a real cake, I would actually dust this panel before I put it onto the cake. Let's move that to one side a bit. But because it's today, I'm just doing it directly on the cake. So take a little bit of luster dust. I'll load my brush, but then take quite a bit off again, just so I don't blitz my cake. I'm not sure how much this is going to pick up, but I have done samples that I can hold up to the camera. But as you can see, I'll just do a section of it, and then I can tilt it back and forth, and the light will show you exactly what I'm seeing here that maybe you're not seeing there. But as with anything that's got detail, and KTC Design Moulds have a lot of detail in them, guys, a luster dust will definitely, definitely bring out all of the detail. So let's tip this up a bit. So as you can see, that shine just takes it to a whole nother level. So say you've got a little princess cake going, how stunning would that be? What about if you were doing um, a carved handbag cake, or you were doing a cushion cake? So, lovely, lovely way to do that. If I wanted to put a drage into it, it's really, really easy to do so. Let me just find my drages. Let's use some white drages. So, 
all I would do is I would just take a relatively small paintbrush, I think this is a number two, and I would just come in with my little bit of edible glue and I'd put a little dot of edible glue into the holes. Now if you're someone who pipes, obviously you can do this with raw icing. Just pipe a little drop in there. And now I'm going to pick up a few brochets. Now if I'm doing them directly onto the top of a cake, I can just drop them in. If I was doing them on the side of a cake, I'd probably use a draggy gun or I would use um, a set of tweezers because I've got some big old hands here. So let's pop one more in just to finish that one little section so you can take a look. So there you go. How pretty does that become? So let's have a look at some samples as I promised and the samples hopefully will give you more of a dramatic look at what we've just created. Let's move you out of the way. Let's put the dust out of the way because I'm notorious for dropping things and the last thing I want to do is drop anything. So let's look. Now I'm going to show you the continuous quilting world and the mini at this point and then I'm going to show you how to use a mini when I use it in conjunction with a cookie. So, so if I'm just using absolutely the mould on its own, this is how it comes out. Now the amount of detail on there to start with is absolutely lovely. So that's what it looks like when it comes straight out the mould. If I then luster dust it in some way, as you can see, how amazing is that? Can you imagine doing a white satin handbag with an orchid over the handle? Or maybe you've got someone who loves fairy princesses. How cute would that be as the side of a cake with a fairy princess on top? So once we've done that, now let's go on to dragées. Now I've done some really good contrasting ones here. As you can see, this is just out of the mould with the dragées or the sugar pills added to it. That's your diamond and that's your square. This is actually done with little tiny um, sprinkles. These are the sprinkles I've used because I couldn't find any sprinkles because I, I packed really quickly. I don't know where I put my sprinkles at home. So I've used sh um, little ones here, little sprinkles, and I've used them as trajets. For me personally, I'd probably get a number one piping tip and just pipe those, but not everyone pipes. So that's the way I do that. Also, this area here, if you're someone who does um, ice malt diamonds, how amazing would that be with little ice malt diamonds in it? So that's that. Now... If I was to combine everything together in one go, so I've molded the piece out, I've lusted it, I've added a little more shading to it, how amazing is that? how dramatic is that? So that's just four millimeter dragées onto it and I did some lime green paste and I lime green lusted. I could have taken it further, the areas here I could have gone with an airbrush and given a little bit of dimension or I could have dusted it with a darker, darker color. So there you go, that's, that's the continuous quilting mold. So let's move that to one side and let's look at the mini. Let's have a quick look and see who's out there first of all. Wow, there's loads of you out there. Thank you guys. Carol, hello Carol. Seeing Carol next week. Watch out for that. I'll be doing another Facebook Live next Monday night. Um, look out for Carol McFarlane, Sugar and Crumbs. Have a look at their website. I can't remember exactly what the details are, but I'll be doing another, another thing on the quilting mold, so you'll see me again then. Um, hello, Bev. Hello, Jackie. A Aileen. Aileen. It is Aileen, isn't it? Wendy. Noreen. Hello, Noreen. I'll see you later this week for a cup of tea. Cup of tea and a digestive or something. Um, Susan, don't know who Susan is. Uh, Jackie Harris, Jackie, Gabby, Pink Rose, Joanna. Be well, there's loads of you. Okay, I'm not getting any questions, which is, means I'm doing my job right. Oh, wait, there is a question. Just ordered mine from Amazon Prime. Why didn't you order them from me? Never mind. Order them wherever you like. So, uh, Can you do a continuous overlap over the top bend of a cake? Very good question, Bev. Okay, and what is Bev is asking me is, can you come up the side of the cake and go over the top? I tried it. I can come up and I can come over so that, let's see if I get one of these pieces that I cut off before, and the top edge would look very pretty, but it would look like that. The moment you start coming into the center of a cake, all of these angles start to change. So 
To my knowledge, on a round, no. I think on a square you should be able to do it because, of course, you're dealing with right angles. But if anyone's tried it yet, I mean, obviously, I haven't got that far with this yet, but you can get a very pretty top edge if you want to finish them off like that as a wrap around the top. But if you're doing a wedding cake, you find there's only usually about an inch or two inches of a gap anyway. You could cut an individual diamond. As I said, you can squish them or stretch them or fill in that gap. So thank you, Bev. Very good question. And that's the answer to it. So, oh, well, I don't side again. Um, where will we up to? We're going to look at the mini. Right. Now, let me remind you. The large one, I'm using any sugar paste or fondant. And what I've done is I add one gram of CMC or Tylos powder to 250 grams of paste. Now... This will depend on which country you're in, what your ambient temperature is, what your humidity is like, whether you're using a softer paste to start with or a firmer paste to start with. So that's working for me at the moment. I, I put white vegetable fat in here, just the thinnest skim, not a huge amount. Another benefit of using that in here is the white vegetable fat likes to cling to any luster dust you put on as well. So when you dust it later, it actually helps you in that matter of fact. And I'm using 170 grams of paste as a starting weight to fill that mold. And as you saw, I take some of the excess off. You'll end up with about 110 grams in the final molded piece you put onto your cake. You can use that piece directly onto the side of your cake. You could put a thin skim of sugar paste or fondant on the side if you really wanted, like I did with my dummy cake, and then attach to that. What I would recommend is then moistening that sugar paste or the ganache or the buttercream before you stick it on and then just slide it into paste. So let's look at the mini one. Now the mini con continuous quilting mold is exactly the same thing except I shrank it by 50% because I do know on trend at the moment are cookies. And cookie, cookie, cookies are very, very, very pretty. And as you've seen by some of Terry Pringle Wood's cookies that she's done, I believe she did a beautiful little blue elephant out of this mold. Absolutely gorgeous. So, oh, and there you go. Production team just put it up for you. How stunning is that little elephant? You know, that's a really quick job. I believe she used the larger one for that one, but you could have done it with the little one as well. And I'm using the little one now, but see, so cu how cute is that for a christening cake? Really, you just got to do that, haven't you? You've got to do that. So when I'm using the smaller one, I'm actually using 75 grams of sugar paste of fondant. The same Tylo to um, sugar paste of fondant ratio, but I'm using the same paste. I call it an adjusted or a modified or an amended paste. Just something that's firmer in my molded paste. Again, I will take a little bit of my white vegetable fat and I will just work my way. It's usually around the edges I put it first of all just to prevent anything sticking because this is quite a shallow mold but it's a lovely detailed mold that can be used for almost anything now when i designed this one i made sure that you can actually get a cupcake top out immediately from it so this is an average cupcake top as you can see bang up pop, pop that straight out if you were very tricky you could do it to one side save your half pieces and then with that half piece you could get two half pieces and create a full one so there you go we're going to be looking at cookie out of this stuff so again i've prepared my molded piece where have i put put my bit of paste no i've lost my piece people where have i gone with the paste See, that's what happens. You have paste, you actually label it, and then you don't know where you put it. So, I'm going to pull out my piece of paste. This is already weighed to 75 grams. That's another way that you can speed yourself up too, by doing your workload as a production line. If you know you're doing a full wedding cake, weigh out all of your paste first, put all of the paste balls into a Ziploc or a plastic bag, and that way they're all ready for you, so you can just get manufacturing them, lay them, put some plastic on them. A bit like when you do gum paste flowers, you can prep them, put them un under a plastic cover, they will stay soft for quite a while. You've not put that much Tylos or CMC powder in it that's going to make it hard and crack. You've got quite a bit of working time. So again, I've rolled this out into a log. I've got my seam uppermost because I want the seam uppermost because it's down. It's going to be right through the middle of my mold. So it's uppermost. 
There's no problem with using a little bit of cornstarch or corn flour or icing sugar on your work surface just for rolling out purposes. I am again trying to create a rectangle that's almost the size of my molded piece. Now as you roll you'll find you'll always get curved corners so I tend to out pull them out a bit to accentuate them as I go. There you go and there you go. If you're in Britain guys I think you're going to appreciate how hot it is here at the moment. I'm sure there's people in Texas screaming now going you have no idea what heat is. Believe me for us this is unusual. So I want the paste on the top of here just so that it sits almost within the parameters. I don't want to go into the edge of the mold because I've weighed the paste. I'm going to just put a little bit of a dab of cornstarch or corn flour or icing sugar if that's what you're using and then I'm going to press down firmly just to anchor the paste into place all the way through. Now as you saw before I go in and I press it deeply into those corner pieces. Now just as I'm doing this if I've got a couple of people saying how much was it. Um, the continuous quilting mold is $19.99. This mini mold is actually $12.99. But I would say if you're going to buy one, buy two. Because you're always going to want to have cookies to match the christening cake or the wedding cake. So get the two of them and then you'll never be looking back. It's a quicker way to do it. I'm going to then come in. I'm going to swipe away the excess. All the way around the edges. Now, for you crafters out there who are looking at this going, oh, there's something in that. If you're someone who does crafting, how cute would this be out of air dry clay as a panel on the front of a card? Or if you're someone who does like miniature work, you could make a miniature headboard for a cake. You could do the back of a chair. So I'll just go tidy up all the edges here. I mean, you could make this out of red air drying clay, cut a heart shape out of it, put it onto the front of a card. And because it's so light, you've got something for Valentine's. You could do it as a scrapbooking piece. If you're into steampunk, you could do this and make it look like a quilted piece in brown or bronze. How cute would that be? Any of those things. Basically, I've got a whole list of projects for myself to do. That I just haven't got round to yet, but I will do. So you're going to see a lot more exciting things from me with this mold. So work my way. You will note that I'm actually keeping my finger here because I don't want to move the paste too much in the mold. But I do want to make sure all of these edges are nice and tidy. Work my way all the way along here. Tidying up. So now. As I said the last time, don't be tempted to come in here and give this a good old press. Just gently let the weight of the rolling pin even it out for you. If you press too hard, you're going to make the pace move. And as the pace moves, you're going to get a double impression. Nobody loves a double impression. So I could free up the edges. But to be honest with you, if I just peel this back. Bang. There you go. Absolutely done. If you're doing something like... Um, a unicorn cake. You could actually marble this with rainbow colours. How cute would that be? Same principle as the other one. They marry up against each other. So let's bring in that cookie I was talking about. So I've got a cookie here. Where have I put the cutter? So that could also be a cupcake top. I've chosen that size so it's actually the same size as the cupcake. So I'll come in here. Take that out of there. Take my excess paste away. Put it to one side. I will just take a little bit of my edible glue. Now, if this was a cookie, I would be using maybe piping gel or I'd be using um, apricot jam. Anything that I would use, use has to be edible, obviously. I then come in, pop that on top. Just make sure it's married up with the sides of the cookie. How quick is that? We've got a christening one. Let's move that to one side. Let's talk about shapes. So let's talk about a heart. Let's bring in another piece. Now, as before, what I've done is I've wrapped them in plastic just to make sure they don't dry out for me. And I did these earlier on today. So um, very wise to keep them covered so they don't dry out too much. Now, when it comes to something like a heart shape, you have to make a decision. Where do you want your heart to be? Do you want it diamonds? Or do you want it squares? These are things you need to need to think about. So I'm going to line mine up to be 
squares. Now if you're doing squares, what you can do is you can make sure this point and this point are lined up on the central line. If you're doing diamonds, look for the same link. Then come down, press it into paste, give it a bit of a jiggle just to make sure it's nice and clean, clean off the edge. I'm developing a pile of paste over here, guys. So again, bringing in a cookie shape, little bit of edible glue on here. I'm using um, a fake cookie here only because I had to travel with them and I didn't in this heat want to be traveling with real cookies. But this would be just a regular sugar cookie. I could do it with a ginger cookie as well. So sit that on top. Let's move that over. Now what I'm doing is I'm just making sure that all of the edges are married up. If this was a real cookie, you would find your cookie would have, it, have expanded slightly in the oven, so you wouldn't have this issue. It's just the fact that I'm not using a real cookie. So there you go. So let's do one more just to show a different shape again. So here's an interesting shape. So say I want to do a christening cake, uh, a christening. So I'm going to bring my pink one in. Again, how do I want this to sit? I think we're actually going to do diamonds on this one. So come in, line it up where it needs to be. It's about there. Give it a good firm press down. Now, you'll note I'm not saying put jargés into these, because why would I? They're so interesting as they are. And I'm going to show you some samples in a minute where I've actually gone in with moulded pieces and added moulded pieces together on top. Now if you're doing production line or commercial cake decorating, you could of course make the moulded pieces well in advance. As long as they're within their sell by date, you'll be fine. There you go. How cute is that? Now of course, obviously as with the others, I could go in and dust these, bring them up with the luster dust. But let's have a little look at some of the examples I've got here. So, let's line these up for you in shop would be a good idea Griffiths. So there's an idea for Easter, there's an idea for Valentine's Day. Just a simple forget-me-not, so that could have gone to Noreen and a not, don't, not forget-me-not cookie for the day she left. So I'm missing you Noreen. Um, someone who's a bit of a fashionista. There you go, another model. Um, again, everyone loves a handbag, everyone loves shoes. So handbag, shoes and cakes. So, and just a simple generic cookie that, you know, someone who's doing gardening. So just simple ideas. What makes them interesting is you have a quality mould that gives you a great impression for the background. Some of these have got dragées on them. We've seen I've done them without dragées. I mean, I'm taking exactly the same cookie there. So I could have one of each cookie in a packet. It could be a favour for Easter. Anything like that. Also, we were talking about cupcakes, so let's move those to one side. So if I'm looking at cupcakes, cupcakes, I've just used little dragées, but there's no reason why I couldn't put a topper on these as well. So, beautiful, they make great, great, great cupcakes. What I would say is when you're attaching them to a cupcake, the reason I'm not doing it today here live on TV is because I'm not battling buttercream at the temperature it is outside at the moment. I would take my cupcake, I would take a palette knife, I'd put a skim of buttercream on there, I'd cut my disc of paste out and just drop it on the top of there and finish it off. Again, these could be lustered, these could have anything like that on top of them. Edible jewels, pipe dots, moulded pieces, absolutely anything you want. So let's have a little run through of everything again, just, just so we're all on the same page. Let me get rid of my handful of paste here. This is what happens when I work. I put it to one side. Always make sure you put your paste under something so it doesn't dry out. So let's talk again. So continuous quilting mold, mini continuous quilting mold. Um, advantage for me is I can do a three inch cake, a four inch cake, a five inch cake, a six inch cake. But do you know what? Do a six inch cake? I could do a 12 inch cake. Just add another panel above it. That's the ideal thing about a continuous mold. I can keep adding and adding and adding. What about those days when you've got a commercial booking and you've got a tabletop to cover? Why not go in and cover the entire tabletop with a quilted design? How fabulous would that be? Just think if you're doing something, say for a goth, you could actually have a complete black quilted table with little pearls, pearls in purple in them. How stunning would that be? 
Um, again, the mini one, you could do a wedding cake with it, but what I would say with this one, it works perfectly. We've seen cutting shapes out of it. How cute would the little cameo panel be on the side of a cake? You could do it to strips, but you could do the whole side of a cake. Yes, it's half the size of the big one, but you know what? You could still do a three inch cake, a four inch cake, a five inch cake and a six inch cake. You could do what you like with them. You've seen me, I did an insert sat on the top of the cake. I could actually have done the insert onto the side of the cake, which is what I might be doing next week. I'm not sure. You have to stay tuned for that one. They work perfectly with cookies and cupcakes. Um, can it go around the top edge of a cake? It can go around the top edge to so far, but when you get to the middle of a cake, other than a square, I think you're going to struggle with it. But you know, when I'm quilting cakes, I normally only do the sides of a cake anyway. Will it airbrush? It airbrushes perfectly. It is so easy to pick an airbrush up. And just do the lines and a little bit of center where they cross, give it a bit more dimension, make it pop. They will work with luster dust as well. I have tried, and it works, you could take some alcohol, not an IPA alcohol, because we know we're not supposed to use that again, but you could use a grain alcohol, you could mix it with a gold or silver, a bronze, a burgundy, any of those luster dust, and you could paint it and you could have an absolutely metallic look. As I did mention, if you're going to be doing something like a steampunk, then you could do a steep steampunk look, and that steampunk look could be made copy or copper or bronze, and add you their embellishments to it. So, right, I just want to show you one more time the technique for moulding the large one because that's the one I'm sure everyone's going to be reaching for. So, I've taken my mould. I put a little bit of white vegetable fat in. Now, I've already white vegetable fatted this once, so it's probably not going to need a lot. I'm then going to take a piece of paste. Let's do a white one for a change. So the piece of paste I'm taking out is 170 grams, if I can get it out the carry back. Come on, it's so hot and humid here. Right, that's out. Now, I'm going to knead my paste into life. As I said, the paste I'm using is one gram of CMC or Tylo powder to 250 grams of um, any sugar paste or fondant. If you have a firm sugar paste or fondant to start with, maybe you don't even need it. I just found I could handle it more and it didn't damage or stretch it. I'm rolling out a log. I want the log about the length of the piece of paste, uh, the mold. I just want to put a little bit of cornstarch down so that it actually doesn't stick. And I want to roll this out to a rectangle. Now, your problem areas are these curved corners. Spend a bit of time and pull them out. Make sure you get squared corners as best you can. If someone out there is working in a bakery, what I would suggest is put your paste through a sheeter, make yourself a cardboard template, go in with a pizza wheel and cut, cut out rectangles and go straight into production mode. And that's for people obviously who are running bakeries. So, and I know quite a few out there, Karen, I'm looking at you, um, who actually use a lot of my molds in America. Thank you very much for that. So I've got that. It's not quite the right width. One more roll. There you go. Lay that over the top. Now I'm going to come in. I just want to make sure that it's almost within the parameters. I'm going to ease out the corners a little bit. Take that out to the edges just a bit. I'm not pressing down at this point. I'm just in, sitting it on there. I'm going to take a little bit of cornstarch or corn flour or ice and sugar if that's what you're using and I'm going to work my fingers into this. Now, while I'm doing this, other mediums that can be used with this, yes, chocolate modeling paste, yes, isomalt, um, yes, you could use it with pastelage, but pastelage is going to dry on you very, very quickly, so be careful of it. If you want to use gum paste in here, know that you're going to have maybe the odd issue because gum paste is very, very stretchy. Yes, isomalt will work beautifully. How about making curved sections for a cake? Wouldn't that just look amazing? So I pushed it all in. I'm going to take a thumb swipe to take off the excess. Just work my way around. All the way around the edges. Now, there is another thing you could do, but I don't tend to do it. I could have brushed my mold with luster dust. 
I tend not to do it with these molds because what I find is then if there's any movement within the paste, the luster dust goes into the creases and actually doesn't allow you to get a flawless finish. So I would say if you're going to luster dust at all, luster dust afterwards and not before. So here you go, just bringing that round, tidying up the edges. It is important to tidy up the edges, but only when it's necessary. If you know you're going to be cutting this edge off, why tidy it? Just take it out. Just leave it as it is. So I'm, I'm a bit OCD, so I do need to make sure all of the edges are tidy. But as you can see, it is quite a quick process when you get going. And down the last side... Now, depending on how sticky your paste is, you might want to free the edges. Again, a really light roll with a rolling pin. If anything, you may not need to do it. But just ease it away from the edges just a little bit. Flip it over. Take it out. And there you go. Absolutely beautiful. I can handle it. I can move it around. So, another question no one has asked is, say I want to downsize this. Well... I've actually got a plastic, oh, drop, drop glue all over the place here, guys. Let me just wipe this off a second. So, what about if I want to cut this? So, say we're, let's do a bit of an experiment. Let's just slice it off there. Right, so this is the back of my cake. And I want this bit to marry up to it. And we know it'll marry up perfectly. However, what about if I've got this much paste and I need to cut it off? How would I do it? What I would do is you need to measure it before you put it on the cake and then you go in with a knife and I'm just using a plastic knife here. And what I'll do is I'll just come in and I'll cut from the points outwards. It doesn't have to be a plastic knife. It's just I don't want to ruin my green flower board. So all the way down. And then once I've done that, my pieces will just marry straight in together. Okay, so what, whatever way I wish to do it, I think I cut the wrong, wrong one off, I should have cut two. Let's just prove to you that it does work. I lost count. See, I shouldn't be allowed to talk and work at the same time, guys. Take those out. There you go, that's what I was looking for, seamless join. So let's do one more thing that's a bit of a wow factor with this. Let's just flip this over and put them onto the back of the mold. Just because I can pick it up for you then in a moment. So, so as I said, it looks beautiful on its own. But the joy of this mold comes into play when you actually do some dusting with it. So let's just get a little bit of white satin pearl luster dust on the go. Just to show you how amazing this looks once you've actually dusted it with a luster dust. Now, you could use a spray can of luster dust quite easily. You could use an airbrush as well and do a mixture of alcohol and a mixture of uh, luster of some sort. I do know there are luster airbrush colours out there. I can't remember a brand at the moment and I shouldn't be naming a brand anyway. So let's put this on here. Right, I will do the whole thing because that way you can just see a little bit of the contrast between lustered and non-lustered. So, so if you then look at this, how amazing is that? So all of a sudden you've got perfect white satin. This area here hasn't been dusted. You can see just how much of a difference that makes. And if I was to put pearls into that, how elegant and how regal would that look? So, just before I wave off and say goodbye, let's run through a few things for you. So, um, large and small, so there's actually the continuous quilting mold, which is $19.99, the mini quilting mold, which is $12.99. Both are available to purchase on the Katie Sue Designs webpage. Um, and when you hit the webpage, there will be options for America and Britain. That also covers the rest of the world, obviously. Just choose which is your best set. Um, if you're ordering them in Britain, they will get sent out this week. If you're ordering them for America, 
is the 13th of July. Um, so you can pre-order them, but you will get them before anyone else because that's the first time they're arriving. At the end of July, I'm going to be at the ISIS convention, which is the International Cake Exploration Society convention in Cincinnati. If you're one of the members of the ISIS community, then that's where we're going to be seeing you. I'm going to be demonstrating them on the Nicholas Lodge stand, so we'll see you there. Um, I'm doing another Facebook Live next Monday. Watch out for that. I'll announce it and you'll get it there. Um, other than that, I think we're doing pretty much okay. Wait, I'm being told something. Can you, we see the cake behind? You know, there's a little lady with a sign saying, can we see the cake behind? Of course you can see the cake behind. So I thought Ian had already shared it. So let me just wipe that down. I'm working very messily today, guys. Okay. Oh, this is the one that you've seen. This is the one that you've seen for the packaging. This is the one that you're going to see at the NEC. Um, I don't know whether, Ian, can you do a bit of an overhead? I don't know whether, whether you're going to be able to see much of it on an angle, but as you can see, there's the pink quilting and there's the white quilting in situ. I did put sugar dragées into these. I chose white, but there you go. So that's what this cake is all about, guys. So if you have any questions, make sure you let us know. Um, we're always available for questions. I will have a look through this. Could you also drooky a name onto it? Yes, that's a good idea, actually. Um, someone has asked, could you drage a name onto it? I think I w if you're going to put a name within dragees, I go for the mini one, because if you do the big one, the spaces are so far apart that if you did an R, an R would take up about two or three inches. I would go for the mini and do that with dragees on that one. But good idea there. Um, hi from Canada. Hello. I need to get back to Canada. I haven't been to Canada for about 18 years. Lovely people, lovely wilderness, love the countryside, love the people. So, my dear, I apologise now. My French is pretty appalling. So if I'm in Quebec or Montreal, I apologise for that. Wow. Good grief. Dad. Thank you for... Uh, Maria, I can see you. Hello, thank you for that. Actually, that's another good point. Yes, you could. And I'm actually surprised that... Oh, we're going to say this wrong. I apologise. Gilles? Gilles. Gilles, I can never remember Gilles last name. Gilles, I apologise, talking about Canada. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Gilles doesn't do a corset cake at some point. And if this was a corset shape, can you just imagine how doing all of the quilted corseting on that? And I'd probably tie that in with a steampunk one as well. So I seem to be arcing on about steampunk a lot. So hope you've enjoyed this. I'm really excited to be sharing stuff with you. As you've noticed, I made a conscious effort and went, you know what? I want to reach out to you via social media because not everyone can find me on the television. And I went, you know what? I like social media. Let's do this. So I'm hoping from here on in, most of my product launches will be done live like this. So it means you get a chance to ask the questions. I can offer you prizes. We can do it straight away. So thank you for shopping, guys. Um, remember, as soon as I finish this, go down and purchase it. You will not regret it. It's a fabulous set of molds. So until next time, Bye-bye, guys. Happy quilting.